हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला माय नेम इज डॉक्टर के आर राम मोहन एंड एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी सिक्किम यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मॉड्यूल ऑन डिफ्यूजनिज्म फ्रॉम द पेपर थियोरीज एंड मेथड्स इन सोशल एंड कल्चरल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी before we begin this topic let us see what are the learning objectives of this concept on diffusionism to introduce students the history of anthropological thought by tracing its historical development of diffusion school to classify the course of historical development academic and anthropological importance in terms of its development to focus on the founding thinkers and anthropologists theories and ethnographic researchers that have constructed histories of anthropology british american and german in the historical process to explore the formation and the emergence of anthropology as a discipline in the 19th century to the late 20th century so what is diffusionism diffusionism is the term used by anthropologists and as well as sociologists to account for the spread through time of various aspects of culture the artistic traditions language music various myths religious beliefs social organization and the technological ideas from one society or from one culture to another group or to another cultures so diffusionism refers to the diffusion or transmission of different cultural aspects or different cultural characteristics or cultural traits from the common society to other societies diffusionism as a school of understanding or a school of thought have vehemently criticized that the concept of psychic unity of mankind from classical evolutionists in a sense that classical evolutionists have expressed that that all societies all cultures have passed from one particular phase of development to another particular phase of development in a sense that uh, there are certain commonalities and there is a psychic unity which that human beings are not aware that uh, the same development has taken here and the same development had also taken place in, a, in another context uh, and that we can they recount that uh, perhaps this could be a unity and uniformity of these uh, developmental things and uh, they says that uh, mankind had uh, same or similar kind of uh, progress uh, from a cultural point of view or cultural development they believed that you know most inventions or things which have come up in in cultures uh, happened just once and uh, other men are capable of imitation these inventions were then diffused to other places in a sense that uh, diffusionism says that you know but, uh, but inventions might have taken place at one particular point and later on they went on to other cultures through various modes it could be the relation of a trade relation or they have communication with other countries when we go back and see uh, how the early trade took place between uh, two cultures and groups where goods were being uh, exchanged and transmitted from uh, one culture or one group to another group in that process perhaps uh, most of the cultural traits have been uh, diffused uh, from uh, one but one point to other points in the society or other cultures in the society so the the basic 
argument or the basic point in diffusionism is that uh, an invention might have taken place in one common place and later on it went to other places which is being diffused in a sense. So, this also gives an, uh, an idea that uh, uh, most of the invention or most of the creation might have taken place only in one point where the other, other cultures they are simply imitated. Now, why they imitated? The, the question arises is that are they uninventive? Because it is only just a, a passive kind. So, human brain cannot uh, you know no need to put a thought exercise. So, just simply you can borrow that element into your own culture. Now, why uh, societies uh, adopt or take one cultural uh, trait into uh, their own existing cultural system? Unless there is an economic value, unless there is a functional value, they do not take into their own cultural uh, system or in, into their own uh, society. There should be an utility value. Only then they can see, yes, this is perhaps use, useful in my culture. Perhaps this gives a good dividends in my culture. Then they try to incorporate this new cultural trait into their uh, existing cultural pattern. So, in a sense that uh, most of the diffusion, uh, diffusion aspects of cultural traits are taken by other cultures because they see there is a functional value, there is a set of economic value, only then it can be uh, taken. Now, the other aspect of uh, diffusion is that uh, uh, all cultures might have originated at one point and then spread to other world. So, they opposed the notion of uh, progress from simple to complex forms uh, held by the classical evolutionists that uh, you know uh, uh, societies started from uh, basic hunting gathering, then they started with uh, pastoral, then they started with this scheme they, they do not uh, uh, diffusionism are a little skeptical in a sense that you know uh, uh, if you look at the entire world invention took place only in one point. Invention did not take place uh, simultaneously in various other aspects. So, if you if you look at the contemporary world, uh, one particular uh, cultural trait might have originated somewhere and uh, now we have practice today. For example, take religion. Buddhism. Buddhism is seen everywhere in the world, but the origin was somewhere or technology as origin somewhere and we use this technology or one particular religious thing which has been origin somewhere or one cultural item which is origin somewhere and we adopt that. So, how did this happen in a historical process? So, diffusionism says that these things have been diffused into different cultures and why other cultures did not get these cultural uh, traits, uh, they say that uh, perhaps there could be more obstacles in a sense that geographical obstacles, transportation ob obstacles, communication things, uh, cultures have been cut off in terms of uh, mountains, in terms of rivers, in terms of uh, uh, other communication things that uh, one cultural trait did not penetrate into other cultural trait because there are certain obstacles uh, in passing this element to other uh, societies. Now, diffusionism as a school of thought uh, has been uh, 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 given uh, uh, says that uh, one cultural trait uh, uh, has been uh, uh, invented, has been directed or indirectly taken by uh, the um, other cultural groups. There are other uh, aspects in uh, taking this diffusion uh, is that uh, you know uh, one cultural trait may get incorporated, uh, uh, it may has its own original form for a long time unless it is being changed for certain reasons. And why and how one cultural trait uh, takes long time to get incorporated depends upon that culture. So, one cultural trait which has been uh, taken into that culture perhaps it could be modified to suit the local needs. It may lo lose its own original form which has taken from the common ground. So, diffusion uh, takes place in, 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 in these aspects. Now, diffusion of cultural traits always takes from uh, a high end culture or from a low end culture. In anthropologically, when we say that uh, developed societies to the underdeveloped societies, to put it very simply, uh, or we can say that high points to the low point uh, culture, but not vice versa. There, there could be no diffusion from uh, simple things to the highly complex 
society but vice versa that uh, the highly complex uh, society gives this new culture uh, cultural trait uh, to the low uh, uh, technologically uh, less advanced uh, uh, society and sometimes this cultural traits may take a long time to get penetrated into uh, into this another culture uh, for variety of reasons so perhaps they may discard it if they they, they don't see any uh, practical utility value for their own well being now diffusion uh, is been explained uh, by uh, three different uh, schools of thought when we have this uh, british diffusionists uh, we have German diffusionists and we have uh, American diffusionists. In the British diffusionist schools, we have uh, three significant uh, uh, scholars. One is uh, uh, Smith, and we have Perry, and we have Rivers. These three uh, scholars or proponents uh, have uh, opined that uh, the whole civilization or the whole cultural things might have started in Egypt. Egypt was the a center for all civilization most of the civilizational things might have started in and around egypt because egypt was flourishing it was the first civilization a civilized uh, society where many things have started and invented there in terms of government in terms of social organization in terms of polity all these things have uh, uh, surrender. For that matter, uh, most of the diffusionists uh, believe that uh, all the civilization has center, uh, centered in Europe. For example, government, ancient law, law is being started in Rome, and uh, government is the, the functions of government started uh, in terms of Rome and uh, these things. Uh, and then it had been percolated to other others, other cultures in this world. So, in a sense that the, when they say that the, the civilization started in Europe and specifically uh, in Egypt, so hence why uh, the British diffusionists are also called Egyptologists or Pan Egyptian uh, diffusionists, in a sense that uh, the support that civilization started uh, in the uh, valley, uh, this Nile Valley, and the Egypt is the center for civilization. So when they are doing ethnographic works in, in, in South America and in other parts of the world, they found that most of the uh, elements which have been uh, taken and they see the similarities between Egyptian culture and the other cultures and they try to establish a link perhaps in the historical process, Egypt, uh, the travelers might have come to Egypt and it has been, uh, came from the civilizational cradle uh, from the centers to these places. Another school of thought which are also called as uh, the German diffusionists uh, started with uh, Radzel, uh, Grabner and Frobenius. These people uh, thought that uh, uh, the concept of uh, culture circles, in German they call culture groups and, and uh, cultures have, uh, they are formed in small, small uh, clusters and says that uh, cultures around in these uh, uh, circles within the Europe. So when culture centers around these circles, uh, it has been uh, diffused into other parts. First, they have these uh, similar cultural patterns in one, one circles and with these circles have gone uh, historically penetrated to other parts of the world. And the other important school in diffusion is the American diffusionists, started with the French Bose, White and Krober have floated this concept called uh, diffusion taken place in the concept of culture areas. Why and how one particular area or one geographical area have the same similar pattern and, uh, and some other areas have the same similar pattern of culture. So in a sense that we can understand that uh, culture area concept in a sense that uh, these diffusion cultural elements have been uh, come towards uh, to these a concept of culture area and they uh, give this uh, concept of uh, that diffusion might have uh, taken place in these uh, culture areas. Now, if you look at the diffusionism as a, uh, as a school of thought, both Egyptian, Egyptologists, Pan-Egyptian, British and uh, German diffusionists uh, did not explain the concept of uh, culture change. They, they are devoid that uh, they 
say that uh, all cultures have started from one point uh, and they have been diffused to other things that but how and why this culture change uh, both the schools uh, did not uh, accept uh, but how american diffusions uh, especially crober says that uh, cultures basically or or societies are basically super organic in a sense that man are little bit inventive and uh, we need to uh, see uh, from an historical point of view that's what franz bose uh, concept is, is that uh, historical particularism why and how a particular trait has come into that perhaps it could have a see from an historical perspective where it has come from whether it has originated in its own place or whether it has come from a different place as a given a new understanding uh, uh, from the area of uh, culture area which crober says that uh, you know, uh, pe people are uh, uh, more uh, cultures can be configured or what you call a, a cultural configuration by Krober. So, in a sense, that uh, diffusionism takes on this concept that uh, most of the uh, cultures have started at one point and has been uh, taken into other cultures by various ethnographic studies. Diffusionism also can be uh, incorporated into Indian context. If you look at the whole Indian society, we can also say how uh, there are some scholars who say that uh, there are certain uh, centers, uh, uh, civilization centers, where language has been or religion or certain religious practices might have originated somewhere and it has been percolated to other parts of uh, in India. So, in a sense that if we understand the whole cultural process uh, across India, uh, diffusionism uh, can be uh, taken to some understood in a sense that uh, how and why certain cultural traits are being borrowed uh, or and how and why culture certain have come from from one point to uh, another points of uh, uh, geographical areas that uh, this trait might have not been here but this have come from other ways so diffusionism is also given an, uh, a new understanding in terms of migration and why, you know, when people migrate from one place to another place, they take these cultural things to other place and they get incorporated, they bring this new thing there. Perhaps it could be syncretized with the local thing and gives uh, some kind of a form and meaning to these uh, new cultural practices. So migration. Historical particularism also give an understanding from an American school of uh, diffusionism saying that, you know, uh, because of these historical contacts that the cultures might have been uh, spread uh, through various aspects and uh, we can understand that the cultural uh, evolution might have been also looked into from this perspective. Thank you. So, to make it more uh, summarize this whole concept of uh, diffusionism. The, the major historical developments in the discipline of anthropology and have a, we have a series of chronological uh, developments at the end of uh, um, 20th century where diffusionism did provide an explanation uh, of uh, how this spread of culture traits uh, from one point to different points, uh, uh, from starting with one center saying that uh, this trait might have originated here and it went on to other cultures. But it could not explain uh, the origin of uh, one particular trait. If you, if you, if you ask that uh, where did where did this trait come from, nobody can uh, explain. But diffusionism simply says that uh, this has come through diffusion. But the other aspect of uh, explanation that where did come from uh, has been not uh, clearly explained uh, by the uh, diffusionist thinkers. Well, in, fo in focusing on the spread of culture traits from uh, one particular area and its acceptance by the other, other geographical areas or other uh, culture areas, it has also minimized uh, uh, the, the capacity of uh, creativity of human beings, which has been uh, challenged by many, many anthropologists or anthropological thought process that uh, why, uh, you know, uh, human beings are uh, devoid of uh, uh, critical thinking or uh, lack of thinking. Does it mean that uh, other cultures don't have uh, uh, a thought process uh, to, to sustain a long period of time? Diffusionism simply says that, you know, 
you know other cultures don't have a, a mechanism or uh, they are uninventive in their own things uh, that's why they simply incorporated a particular cultural trait or a particular technology for their own benefit so this is little contradictory uh, uh, when we when we says that you know diffusionism uh, has given as uh, that one particular cultures have all come from one one origin well in fact uh, one of the major uh, uh, debates of uh, anthropological literature of uh, in, in in earlier times uh, was on uh, uh, you know uh, the concept of diffusion and invention uh, but this, this debate was there whether why only certain uh, cultures are inventive and why certain other cultures are not inventive. So, in that sense, uh, diffusionism has uh, uh, given uh, a more uh, level of understanding to, to look into other possibilities whether human beings are creative or human beings are simply unin uninventive and they are simply passive. So, it was that uh, diffusion uh, could not account for the uh, independent intervention uh, or for the culture's change. You know, they, 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 this, this explanation is not given by uh, the diffusionist thinkers, uh, like uh, uh, situations of a prolonged period of uh, uh, contact between two or more cultures, uh, which is uh, added to its own distinctive way of uh, those in which uh, culture contact leads to uh, selective borrowing uh, is, is uh, uh, a, a threat to the uh, validity of uh, general principle of uh, diffusionism. Again, also uh, the other remaining unexplained uh, uh, is the uh, attribution of that uh, uh, cultures uh, have, have no contacts with uh, other cultures, uh, which is uh, a debating uh, concept uh, uh, within the school of uh, uh, diffusionism and how uh, the exhibiting uh, similarities and uh, uh, parallels with each other cultures are not being, you know, why certain uh, cultural trait has a similarity in, the, in, in many cultures and why there is a, a parallel which has also been uh, discussed thoroughly in the diffusion. Well, notwithstanding the uh, limitations, uh, the diffusionist school of thought uh, has captured the attention of anthropologists uh, for a long time in a sense that uh, uh, nurturing the uh, faculty of uh, critical appraisal. Well, uh, uh, more seriously, uh, the diffusionist school uh, represented a, a modest attempt between uh, how these uh, cultural traits have been passed and it was not easy to uh, discount uh, as it's uh, principally devoid of uh, any merit. We cannot say that. But if you look at uh, most of the uh, elements today in modern society, how and why certain things have been diffused and uh, the origin might be somewhere else, but uh, so the present context cultures uh, practice uh, a particular cultural traits which is noteworthy and we have to give some merit to, to uh, the diffusionist understanding of uh, a cultural type. In fact, uh, diffusionism provided uh, the foundation for the uh, development of uh, uh, crucial ideas and concepts uh, that were employed not only by anthropologists uh, but uh, other, other uh, social science uh, dis disciplines like uh, geography, sociology, uh, political science, economics also uh, have uh, taken the concepts of diffusionists uh, that uh, why certain governmentality has seen in this particular area which has been not inventive but it has been come from other side. So what are the reasons for these things? So in, in this way, uh, uh, it is uh, basically diffusionism is like a melting point where many many disciplines have uh, borrowed these concepts of that uh, uh, while uh, how and uh, how this cultural traits have been invented somewhere and it has been uh, uh, practiced and followed elsewhere is it due to migration or is it due to trade or is it due to communication and how and why it becomes a long term change and why it has been incorporated, why it lost its original form, why it is still gained its original form and how it has been synchronized into local cultures. All these things are uh, a good understanding uh, from cultural traits uh, from a diffusionist point of view. Thank you.